Good afternoon and welcome to Callum Cymru uh, session number two for GCSE English Literature. So this afternoon the session will be run by Mrs Yvonne Thomas uh, who teaches in Green Hill School in Tembe. Uh, we aim to uh, take the session for about 45 minutes and uh, Mrs Thomas will go through um, some subject content primarily looking at the uh, essay question for Of Mice and Men. Um, if you've got any questions during that session, uh, if you can please feel free to use the question and answer section and we will try our best to answer the questions as much as possible. Um, as you may be aware, the session is going to be recorded and the recording and any resources that are uploaded to the um, ESCOL website in the Caradalam Cymru area. Uh, so now over to you, uh, Yvonne. Thank you. OK, good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to the English Literature GCSE revision session. Um, as Miss Davis has just said, the focus today is the essay question um, and that's applicable to both unit one and unit two. So any of the essay questions that you um, have to do in unit one or unit two, you can use this structure that I'm going to show you. Um, as Miss Davis said, please feel free to use a Q&A function to ask any questions and we will try to respond to those. Um, and again, um, the session should be 45 minutes long. Um, you can go back and watch the lesson again if you feel that you've missed anything and the resources will be uploaded as well. OK, so by the end of this lesson, the learning objective today is you should be able to understand the mark scheme for an essay question. So we will have a, a look through the mark scheme and help you to understand um, what kinds of things the examiner is looking for. And also um, I'm going to show you a structure which I use with my students in school to respond to an essay question and hopefully that will help you to organise and develop your responses. OK, so first of all, then what is an essay question? So in the unit one GCC English Literature Assessment, you're required to complete an essay and an extract question on of mice and men. So last week I did um, spend some time going through the extract question, which again is available on the eSCOL website. Um, and today I'm going to go through the essay question. In unit two, you're also required to complete an essay on the novel and the play you've studied. So you'll complete two essay questions in unit two. Again, this essay structure is suitable for either of the papers. Obviously, you'll just have to um, adapt it to fit the novel or the play that you are reading. The essay question then tests your knowledge of the book or the play in terms of character, context and theme. OK, and we'll go into all of those um, parts of the mark scheme as well um, in a moment. And the essay question is worth 20 marks. OK. So moving on then, we're going to have a quick look at the mark scheme. So for the, um, the essay response, the AO1 and AO4 sections, so assessment objective one, critical response to text, and assessment objective four, which is context, are applicable to the essay question. They don't um, mark you in relation to assessment objective two, or assessment objective three. So it's just purely these two assessment objectives that we're going to look at. OK, so assessment objective one. So what is the critical response to the text? It's split into bands. So the first one obviously is zero marks where there is nothing worthy of credit. So obviously that means that you've, you've not written anything that they're able to provide any marks for. For one to four marks, you have um, you show a simple awareness of some aspects of character or theme. OK, so you, you might know something about a character or theme and you might respond to the question and give some basic details about those. Five to nine marks, your answers may be narrative, which means that you, you're telling the story and you're not really analysing the character or the theme with some knowledge of the main events and relationships and perhaps some general opinions on the effect of contextual factors. OK, so the five to nine marks you need to. Um, obviously, you would be telling the story more than analysing. We then move to the next band, which is 10 to 14 marks. Um, at the lower end of that band, your answers may still be narrative driven, but you'll show more relevant selection of key scenes and events. 
um, which demonstrate an understanding of characters and their relationships with other characters and themes. OK, so um, in, in simple terms, that means that you, you're selecting evidence and examples from the text which demonstrate something about a particular character or theme that you're writing about. And there'll also be um, a more thorough understanding of how context has an effect on characters. So you'll be able to link the context that you know about the book um, to the character or theme that you are writing about. At the higher end of that band for 13 or 14 marks, your answers will be more thorough and there'll be a clear th a focus on the importance of character or theme. So it'll be much more detailed. OK, and then the highest band is 15 to 20 marks. So at the lower end of that band, your answers will be evaluative and astute with assured use of relevant detail. So you'll be able to um, analyse the text a little bit more and you'll be able to evaluate what the character um, is like. OK, if you're doing a character analysis or the theme, how the theme fits in with the characters in the book. OK, and you'll be able to um, confidently explore how they um, link to the plot of the novel and um, how they link to context as well. The higher end of that band, then um, you might show a bit of originality and be able to analyse perhaps the writer's techniques and the language that they use. Um, and you'll be able to refer quite confidently to the text and move from um, a general analysis to a more specific analysis of parts of the text. Um, and when when we talk about originality, we mean perhaps that, you know, things that you might think about that the perhaps the examiner may not have, have um, thought about, you know, so your ideas might be more original and you might be able to link specific details or specific characters or themes to certain parts of the text. OK, so that's the AO1, the critical response to the text. The next part that you're examined on, which is really important, is the context. OK, this is half of the marks of the um, total um, S, uh, the total marks of the essay. So it's really important that you refer to context. So I've put a definition there of context. It's the background information surrounding a subject. And when studying a text, um, it can apply to either historical context or cultural, social or political context. So in simple terms, it means what was happening at the time. So um, culturally, socially, politically, what was happening at the time that the author wrote the book? OK, and how does he um, how does he in, include those details within the writing and link them to specific characters or specific themes. OK, now at the lower end of the band, um, your um, comments on context uh, are barely present. OK, so there might be some awareness that this text is set in a different time in a different place, but you're not really specific about when the, the text was set. So you might not be able to give details and link characters and themes to those details. In the second band then, um, you again show a limited awareness, but you're, um, you might have a simple, um, you might be able to simply address um, characters or events and link them to context. You might have some awareness of the cultural and historical context on the characters' lives and how characters were affected by the things that were going on, but you might not be so specific and you might not relate the context to the question and um, you might not link it firmly to the character or the theme. OK, the next band then, you have explicit references to context. At the bottom end of the band, you may still have a bolted on approach, which means that you just put context in for the sake of it and don't really link it to war, um, specifically to that character or to the event that you're talking about. So you, your comments may be more generalised or you might make sweeping statements. You need to really delve down and link those characters as, um, to what was happening at the time and perhaps what they they tell us about the time that, that the uh, author wrote in. OK, and in the, the top band, 15 to 20 marks again, you'll have um, 
a well informed you'll be well informed of a range of rele relevant details surrounding this chosen text and you'll use these purposely in a purposefully sorry in a focused way so directly applying them to spe the specific question that you asked you asked so you'll be able to um, pick out characters or themes and link them directly to what was happening socially culturally and historically during that time okay they won't just be bolted on um, the, you'll you'll be able to give examples of why a character may have acted in a certain way or what a character shows about that specific time and how a theme shows um, what was going on during that specific time. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what's expected in terms of context. So we're going to go on to the um, feedback then. So the feedback from the WJC on the essay question. So they, um, after an exam is, is sat, they will give feedback to say how um, students performed in those particular questions. So their feedback was that a successful essay response would show clear appreciation of how context shapes characters, attitudes and motivations. So it's that link um, to context and being able to demonstrate how um, things that were happening at the time um, related to how characters acted and um, how, how characters behaved. Um, a selection of a range of apt events and quotations to develop and support ideas. So you're able to um, include quotations and events from the book um, that relate to the point that you're making. Some analysis of how the writer's message is conveyed through characters, relationships and events. So um, if a specific question asks you something, you, you'd be able to tell, a, tell the examiner how um, how the writer is trying to tell us something through what the characters do or their relationships with other characters or the events in the novel. OK, the characteristics then of a less successful essay response. So many um, responses, well, sorry, not many um, responses would lack structure and are often too short. The question is not addressed or answered. So again, it's that that reference to the question. Make sure you're addressing that in your response. Contextual factor, factors were bolted on. So as I explained before, the, the, there's a generalised reference to context rather than specifically um, talking about how it relates to the character or the theme. And there's a lack of relevant supporting textual references. So a lack of um, evidence from the text in terms of events described or perhaps quotations from the text. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what the WJC are looking for when they're looking at a response to an essay question. OK, so essay planning then. So this is something that I, I go through in, in detail with my classes. So it's always essential to think about uh, and plan any essay that you write. It's, it's, it's not very effective if you just begin writing an essay without thinking about the each each um, paragraph to know that what you're going to be writing in each paragraph. So it ensures that when you begin to write, you have a clear focus, a thought process and direction. So you know what you're you're going to be talking about in every single paragraph. And the way I do my planning with my um, students is normally on the board. We will mind map each paragraph. So we will um, think of an idea for each paragraph. We'll then think of what event we can use to demonstrate that point that we're making. We'll think of a, a piece of evidence, a quotation from the text to use, and we'll, we'll um, link it to character. Uh, sorry, we'll link it to context and also theme as well. So what the um, this is part of um, what WJC have said as well. Without careful planning, an essay usually has no structure. It lacks direction and doesn't maintain focus upon the question. So sometimes you lose if you're not planning, you're losing track of, of what your point, the point is that you're making and you might, you know, end up waffling more than making your your point clear. OK, so always take some time to plan and think about what you're going to write before you start writing. OK, so the essay question then. So 
in the um, papers then, there are two choices for the essay question on the text in unit one and unit two. You only have to complete one of the choices. So you choose one from two. They're normally either related to character or theme. OK, so today I'm going to show you examples of both types of essay and we'll focus on the unit one exam using of mice and men as a text. I'm going to show you an example of um, an essay on character and an essay on theme. Um, the structure I show you can be used for an essay on any of the texts in unit one and unit two. So I'm just kind of repeating myself there just to, to make sure that you're aware any of these structures that I use. Um, they will they'll be adaptable for unit one or unit two in, in the, the um, essays that you do on any, any of those units. OK, so this is a question I'm going to focus on today. And one of the things that I encourage my students to do is to highlight and annotate the question so that they understand what 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 it is it's asking of you. So this question then, how is the character of candy important in Of Mice and Men? Remember to support your answer with reference to the novel and to comment on its social, cultural and historical context. OK, so the focus of this essay is obviously the character of Candy. OK, um, when it says important, so how is Candy important? That should be your focus when you're writing your essay. So every point should include the statement that Candy is important because and then you, you go on to, to tell how candy is important. So perhaps think about what does he tell us about life in America during this time? So again, that links to your um, context as well. It does also say support your answer with reference to the novel. OK, so the reference to the novel part here, which I haven't highlighted, but that means that you have to um, talk about events and find evidence in the novel. OK, and the social and historical content context, sorry. So you should relate your response to the context of the novel. So you need to relate it to what was going on at the time, as we've discussed. OK, so this is um, my planning then that I, I would do with my classes um, if I were to do this essay on candy. So first of all, I would consider what the important scenes were involving candy. So these are a list which I'm not going to read them all out, but these are the, the points at which the novel in the novel Candy appears. OK, so there's certain things there like Carlson shoots Candy's dog to put it out of its misery. Candy is upset. So th that's an important part of the novel. So these are important scenes where Candy is involved. OK, so I'll leave that up for a second just to have for you to be able to have a read. Obviously, the um, resources, the PowerPoint will be on the um, Carl and Cymru website as well, so you'll be able to read through this as well yourself. OK, the next thing I would do is think about how candy is important. OK, um, part of my planning process, obviously you wouldn't be able to necessarily do this in exam, this uh, in the exam situation. But if I was doing this in a classroom, I would think about all of these points and then perhaps pick out the four main points that I'd want to talk about. So here are some points that I, I think uh, that we that I've I've considered about how um, candy is important. So that first one there, candy is used as a gossip and helps the reader learn about other characters. OK, so that's the one I'm going to focus on today, um, but I have got examples of the planning I'd use for all of the other points on that screen. OK, and you'll be able to see these as we go along, but I won't be going through a lot of them in detail. OK, because my prime concern is that you know what the structure is when you're writing the essay. OK, so there's some examples there. OK, so this is the essay structure, so I would uh, I, well, the thing I tell my students is that we do an introduction at the beginning. We do four body paragraphs using the structure below, which I'll go through in a moment, and then the conclusion. So the structure that I use is a connective and a point. This is for each paragraph. I comment on an event. I include an, a quotation linked to that event and that point. I then link it to theme. So for a character question, I was all, would always link it to theme. Even for a, a theme question, 
I was would always try and link it to another theme, but I will show you that again as we progress through the PowerPoint. OK, and then obviously context, and that's the important part in the paragraph as well. OK, so here is my example now. So this is an introduction model. So the introduction um, it should be short and to the point. You shouldn't spend a lot of time on your introduction. OK, the, the main thing that the examiner is concerned with or um, you're the, the, the interested in what you write in your main body paragraphs because they're interested in, in how it relates to the title. So your introduction should just be really a, a summary uh, of what you're going to discuss. So just an overview before you start writing the actual um, the actual points that you're making. So don't spend too much time um, worrying about the introduction. You could even leave some space and write the introduction after at the end of your your essay. OK, because the the body paragraphs are much more important than, than the introduction. But the introduction just adds that little bit extra and shows that you're aware of how to structure an essay. OK, so if you move on to the first body paragraph then. So Candy is used the gossip and introduces the reader to other characters. So what I would do as part of my planning process, I would link it to all of these things. So the point I'm going to make if we look in the top right hand corner here, OK, um, I'm sorry, I'll just go back. Um, if I look in the top right hand corner, so the point I'm making is this. The candy is used as a gossip and introduces the reader to other characters. OK, the event I'm going to use then is this one. He welcomes George and Lenny to the ranch and through him they learn about other characters. He tells them all about the boss, Curly, Slim, Crooks and Curly's wife. Unusually, Candy has been at the ranch a long time, so knows a lot about the other characters and he's happy to share the details. So that links in to the fact that he's a gossip. OK, so he's um, the event I'm going to use is that first meeting he has with George and Lenny. OK, I then link it to a quotation. So he often starts his sentences with tell you what, as if he's be beginning a set story. I also may include that um, he tells the other men about Curly's wife. So I think Curly's marriage is tart. So he, he links with that same the uh, sorry, that event, the gossip, because he, he says the words tell you what quite regularly. So it's like he's starting a conversation with the other characters and he tells them about the other characters. OK, the theme I would link this to then is loneliness. Candy is lonely and wants to make friends. His only friend is his dog and he relies on its company. So he's desperate to, for anyone new that comes on the ranch. He's desperate to make friends with them. OK, he lives quite a lonely life because um, in the 1930s, um, which I've linked to context here, 1930s America, ranch life was very isolated. So he's unable to make friends as workers don't stay for very long. They move on to other ranches wherever work's available. But Candy's trapped at the ranch due to his disability and wants to be liked by new workers who come to the ranch. So the context there, he shows us as a reader what life is like in the ranch. It's very isolating. And as a re result of that, he desperately tries to make friends with everyone who comes to the ranch and he's able to, because he's been there so long, he's able to tell them things that have happened there before. So therefore, you know, he, he shows us about ranch life in 1930s America and how lonely it was. OK, so here now I, I'm going to put this into um, a paragraph now. So using that, that um, that structure there, so point, event, quote, theme, context. I'm also using my connective at the beginning of my paragraph. So firstly, Candy emphasised the loneliness which existed in 1930s America, and he's portrayed as a gossip who is eager to make friends with new workers such as George and Lenny, and he introduces them and the readers to the main characters who we are yet to meet. OK, one, so he, he tells them about the other characters. One moment in the book, so this is my event now, which demonstrates this is when George and Lenny arrive at the ranch, he gossips with them about the other ranch workers and acts as a Greek chorus. 
OK, so he tells them all the information. He's like a um, almost like a, a loudspeaker telling them the information. So a Greek chorus. Candy, Candy repeatedly uses the phrase tell you what to demonstrate that he's keen to talk and share information with the two newcomers. Candidate, so now I'm going to link it to theme. So candidate, Candy's eagerness to gossip, sorry, may represent the fact that like many ranch workers in the novel, he's lonely and has no significant friendships. And then my link to context. This could reflect the context of 1930s because many ranch workers lived solitary and isolated experiences due to their itinerant lifestyle. So they travelled around a lot. They were itinerant, itinerant workers. They travelled wherever the work was. And this is emphasising the fact that as one of the few workers who's not had the same need to move around to find work, Candy has not formed close bonds with ranch workers. So because they move on so quickly, he's unable to, to, um, to establish friendships with them. OK, so hopefully that will help you to organise and develop the ideas in your paragraph, that structure. That paragraph structure can be used for any of the paragraphs that you want to write. So in the next few slides, um, OK, well, I've put here actually, each of your paragraphs should use the structure I've just been through. The next few slides um, give you more ideas for the points you could write about in relation to this essay. So as part of your revision, I'd perhaps look through this PowerPoint and practice writing them up using the paragraph structure. So for example, the next one that I would look at would be Candy's used to demonstrate the powerlessness of the old and infirm their vulnerability. So it's important because he tells the reader about the, the um, difficulties that the old and the infirm um, encounter. OK, so then I have put the planning um, part of the paragraph on the slide for you. So I've put the point at the top, the event, the quote, the theme and the context. OK, and I've done this with several points that you could use in this particular particular essay. So he's used to show that dreams gave people hope in 1930s America. So again, I've set out the slide um, using that structure. So again, it's another paragraph that you may want to practice. Another point there is used to show the devastating impact of unrealized dreams in 1930s America. So again, that same um, structure there. And then there's one about loneliness as well. OK, so hopefully that gives you lots of ideas. There's the final one, I think, is used to show how women were treated in 1930s America. Again, that same structure gives you um, can help you to structure your own paragraphs. So that might be part of something that you want to do in terms of your revision. OK, or you might want to use this same structure for any of the other essays that you revise going forward. OK, um, there's another one there, actually, I thought that was the last one, but there's one about prejudice as well. OK, and finally, then the conclusion again, the conclusion, don't spend too much time on the conclusion. The um, examiners are more interested in your body paragraphs. So again, it's just a summing up of what you've talked about and perhaps, you know, um, a referral back to the question. So the character of Candy is important to the novel because, OK, um, and just reiterating what you've already said through the essay and what you mentioned that you're going to talk about in the introduction. OK, so it's just a link back to that question again. Also, they might want you to um, include your opinion. So you could, this might be an opportunity to include what you think about the character of Candy. OK, perhaps you think he's not so important in the novel. So again, you'd express your opinion at this point. OK, so just aware of time now, I'm just going to quickly go through a theme question. So your essay, uh, an essay question on theme should be linked to characters. So your four paragraphs should try to um, link to four different characters who demonstrate the theme you're being asked about. So the, the question I'm going to use here is dreams do the characters more harm than good in of mice and men. To what extent do you agree with this statement? OK, so it's a theme of dreams that we're talking about here. Sometimes the questions will be phrased in a way that might make you have to think. Um, you know, sometimes the, the, um, 
they're structured quite awkwardly and you might not think it is a, a question um, about dreams. You might think this is a character question, but it's definitely, you know, about how dreams affect characters. Do they have a, a negative effect on them or do they have a positive effect? OK, and how far do you agree with that? OK, so how do a dream, dreams affect characters? Do not focus on one character. So you'll notice there there's a plural characters. OK, um, are the dreams they have negative or are they positive? Which are they? And give your opinion. So the examiner is inviting you to give your opinion. To what extent do you agree with this statement? OK, so again, I do a, a planning, um, a bit of planning. So I've, I've got four things here that I might consider. So I might talk about George and Lenny's dream to live off the fat of the land. Candy, um, wanting to join George and Lenny's dream, feeling that he's trapped and sees a dream as his only escape. Curly's wife and perhaps her dreams being destroyed when she married Curly. And Crux, his dream it, um, is, he talks about his past and how he, he remembers a life without segregation, where he fondly played with um, other children, white children in his childhood, and they didn't seem to be this focus on, on um, prejudice and segregation, and he dreams of a time, a, a life where, where he could live without that. Okay, so those are the four themes that I, sorry, four characters that I would perhaps talk about. Okay, so the first one then, George and Lenny dream of owning their own land. Again, I have split this into the event, the quotation, um, linking it again to a theme, Although, you know, this is a theme question, there's always perhaps another theme that you might want to link it to. And again, a context. So this um, particular um, event then, this is when George, Lenny asked George to repeat his, their dream over and over again as he's comforted by the thought of it. So they want to own their own land where Lenny can tend to the animals. So you might talk specifically about the beginning of the book where he um, asked George to repeat the dream, or you might um, talk about when they're um, in the bunkhouse and ca um, Candy's dog has just been um, euthanized and he, he um, asks George to repeat their dream again and Candy overhears it. Or you might talk about the end of the book when Len uh, George, you know, quite freely repeats the dream to Lenny to comfort him at the end of his life. OK, so any of those events could be appropriate. The quote that you might use there is live off the fat of the land because that's that's their their dream. They want to be able to survive um, independently and live off um, the animals that they raise and the crops that they grow. The theme of friendship then. So, you know, their dream, they share a dream, which is quite unusual during this time um, because their their friendship is quite strong. They travel together and George looks after Lenny. Um, you know, he, he takes that paternal role, which is unusual during this time, but Lenny probably wouldn't have been able to survive without George's, um, well, George's support. Um, and the context then, it shows the harsh times during the economic depression. Um, you could talk about the Wall Street crash, which had caused mass unemployment and poverty. And many men dreamed of, still had a dream, despite these um, difficult times, as it was an escape from reality and they, they held on to that dream of owning their own land. OK, so putting that into a paragraph then, this would be my, my example paragraph. So firstly, George and Lenny have a dream which helps them survive the harsh conditions of ranch life. Lenny continuously asks George to repeat the details of the ranch they dream of owning because it comforts him and makes him feel safe. So my event there, one moment in the book that demonstrates this is when George and Lenny first introduced the reader as they camp out in the brush. Lenny asked George to tell him about their plan, where they can live off the fat of the land and where Lenny can tend the rabbits. OK, the theme then, George and Lenny's friendship was unusual during this time, as men normally travelled alone to find work and were not able to form friendships. And then finally, the context. So this reflects the context of America in the 1930s because many ranch workers lived solitary and isolated experiences due to their itinerant lifestyle.
Do you see an economic crash? Times are hard, but many men still dreamt of owning their own land and escaping the uncertain and difficult life of the ranch. So they grasped onto this dream during that time because, um, you know, it was something to to live for and and be able to look forward to. For George and Lenny, their dream did them more good. So I, I'm referring now back to the title again, as it gave them a sense of hope and was a way of them escaping reality. OK, so that's just my little part on the end relating to context, but also relating to the title. OK, again, as practice, as revision for yourselves, you could go back to the to the slide that I used there where I listed all of these different um, characters that, that perhaps you could um, link to. So perhaps have a, you know, think about some of those other um, examples of how characters um, are linked to the theme of dreams. Um, so there, Candy wants to join like, George and Lenny's dream. So, you know, perhaps talk about there how Candy's trapped at the ranch because he's been compensated because of his disability and he's been able to, to stay there with a, a job that suits him, whereas he wouldn't be able to do that at any other ranch. But he still dreams of this escape. He still wants to be able to own his own land and work his own land. OK, Curly's wife then. Um, how her dreams were destroyed when she married Curly. It's not the life that she dreamt of. OK, she wanted to be a movie star, but she didn't achieve that. She feels that her mum um, perhaps um, stopped her having that dream because the letter that she was expecting from a, a Hollywood producer never arrived. And she thinks that her mum hid that letter because she wanted her to be married off. OK, and then Crooks then. Um, as I said before, he dreams of that life without segregation. So it's an idea as part of your revision to try and use these ideas here, um, perhaps set out a, a planning, um, well, plan your paragraph by using this kind of style that I've used, and then finally writing your paragraph using the structure that I've gone through with you. OK, so. Um, as I said, use those as revision. OK, um, so hopefully um, by the end of this lesson, I've helped you to understand the mark scheme for an essay question and I've helped you to use a structure to respond to an essay question. Obviously, that structure is one that I used with my um, sorry, I use all the time with my students. It might not be the structure that you're taught at school because every teacher and, and every school is perhaps different. But, you know, it's just another idea of how you could respond um, to some of these essay questions. Please don't, you know, go back to your teacher and say, well, this is the essay. This is a structure I've been told to use. They may, ha may have different ideas that might work better for you. OK, so um, I'm just going to um, ask Miss Davis now if there are any questions that have come up during that um, presentation and if there are any questions that you'd like to ask, you can um, put those in the Q&A now. Is there anything that's come up there, Miss Davis? No, no, no Mr. Thomas. Thomas. OK, and how many participants do we have this evening? Uh, zero. OK, right, OK. <laughs> Brilliant. OK, so um, next week's session then um, will be Miss Davis presenting and we're going to be focusing on the unit one poetry comparison question. So that's the um, essay that you do in the unit one, as well as the extract and the essay for Of Mice and Men. Um, as we, we said at the beginning, the sessions are all recorded and you're able to you'll be able to access those again um, on the Calam um, Cymru website. OK, so just um, just would like to say thank you for joining us. Um, thank you for um, obviously looking through these um, PowerPoints. I hope they'll be and these recordings. I hope they'll be helpful to you in your revision as we go forward. OK, thank you and um, enjoy the rest of your evening. Oh, thank you, Mr.